Welcome, welcome, welcome to another COVID edition of Black Westchester Presents the People Before Politics radio show. This is episode 274. I am joined with, I am A.J. Woodson, David Jones maybe or maybe not joining us later. And I have my lovely co-host with me, Lorraine Lopez. Um, Dr. Bob will not be here. He is preparing his lessons for his class. He's a professor. He has a lot of work to do for school this week, so he will not be here. And hopefully sometime in the second part of the show, we will have um, a journal news reporter, Mark, I can never pronounce his last name, Lungriello. I think that's the closest I've ever pronounced it. That, that, who wrote the... Um, the uh, feature on us on Black Westchester in the Journal News. It ran in the newspaper Friday and it, were, it started running on the website um, Wednesday, but it was behind a paywall. So anyone who has not read the article online and wants to see it, just email me your email address. Just email me to blackwestchester at gmail.com and I will send you the article in the body of the email so you can read it without having to go behind it. Um, Lorraine, so what have you been up to? You've been very busy. Uh, you, um, this just, you had some news for this week. Something happened this week. What happened? With you. What? Becoming, uh. I, oh! <laughs> okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to let you say the news. I'm trying not to give your news out. I'm letting you say your news, so. Oh, 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 um, uh, you know, Lorraine, come back. Uh, so this week I was nominated. They did the reorganization for the wards, I guess, all over the county. And in Yonkers, um, they were reorganizing the fifth ward, and uh, Frankie Jarris, the new ward leader, congratulations to him. Uh, nominated me uh, for district leader, and uh, the Honorable Assemblyman Nader Sayich seconded the motion, and uh, I was appointed district leader for the city of Yonkers, 5th Ward 23 ED. I'm very proud of that. I'm honored to accept the assignment. And Now, um, I now what area is that? What does that cover for us that are not, not building in Yonkers? Where is that? Um, in Yonkers. Okay, okay. Th th there you go. I, I, you know, people start creeping. Okay. So very good. Congratulations. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, my dear. Getting ready to start homeschooling my grandson. Applause. Oh, that says applause. I was trying to find the applause button. Oh, <laughs> and, and, it actually, <laughs> and it actually said applause. It, just, it, it, it didn't clap. Oh my God, that's so funny. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> no, we're very good, very good, very good, very good. Thank very you. You know, I, I try to stay away, but it's in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a fill in the beginning. <laughs> okay, Thank you. Me. There you go. We found some applause, crowd cheering sound effects that I can use now uh, since we're not in the studio. Um, that's why we keep saying another COVID edition. We have not been back at the studio, as you can tell, but the show must go on. We try to bring you the show every week. Um, if you missed earlier this week, we had. Um, we had the latest installment in the series on the Mount Vernon uh, police tapes uh, with the reporter uh, George Joseph from the Gothamist um, and WNYC Radio, who broke the story on the whistleblower cop. And um, he came on along with um, attorney Peter Davis, who um, represented and represents some um, individuals who have, um, whose rights have been abused by the, the officer in question 
and some um, of his victims. Yes, yes, yes. Um, current and and past, and um, he was able to speak to that. Um, definitely, it's on Black Westchester now. It's the uh, Mount Vernon Police tapes, Black Westchester Power Hour, the Mount Vernon Police tapes, Part Three. Definitely, definitely, you want to check that out. And uh, why do you check that out at? Um, Black Westchester. I just loaded it up. It's on blackwestchester.com. You see it on the front page. Just click on it. Um, very good, very good uh, show. Um, the Malvern Police Commissioner was pay, paying attention and leaving comments. Keith Olson from the Yonkers PBA was was tuned in, left a couple of comments. Um, it was it was it was pretty good. Um, some other law enforcement people were listening, and also we had Dr. Damon Brown, a former office former officer, and now. Um, um, I guess a professor is a doctor. And kaboom, guess who stepped up in the room? Black by popular demand, Damon K. Jones. What's happening? It is, it, it is, hey, what's happening? What's happening? It is, it is not an illusion. It's a Sunday night and Damon's here. <laughs> He's really yeah. here. Yeah, I'm tired. Yo, me too, man. That's why I said we need some more. Yo, so so Mark's going to, um, he has some family stuff to take care of. He's trying to get in for the second half. Okay. He's trying to get in by 7 o'clock. So I was just telling people to check out the show from uh, Thursday, the Mount Vernon Police Tape show. Um, definitely a good show if they want to check it out. And we were just congratulating Lorraine for becoming the latest district leader in Yonkers. Yay. One more time, one more time. Yeah, it's the takeover. Yeah, you already know. You already know. Catch <laughs> uh, some applause noise, dude. It's the takeover. Yeah, uh, that's it. I yes, yes, yes. And while while we're while we're congratulating, uh, let me congratulate you too. That was an extraordinary article in the Journal News. Great article. Mark did a great, great job. Article, great article. Um, 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 I don't think anybody could have said it better than that. Uh, and I mean, very precise, very you know. Let everybody, you know, I had pe I had uh, several people, um, white professional people, um, hit me up and tell me that they have a new understanding of Mr. Damon Jones and Mr. A.J. Woodson now, and um, they've they've actually become fans of the show now. That's good. We we find that like a lot of people who have either come on the show or I've actually met and actually sat down who had heard things about us and maybe not liked us, but didn't know us when they sat down and actually talked to us. Mm -hmm. They were like, yo, you guys are cool. I like y'all, you know, and they love what we're doing. But they just heard from the haters and they never had any personal interaction. So D. Wilson said, congratulations, Lorraine. And she said, good evening. Good evening, AJ, Lorraine, and Damon. What's up, Jay? Yeah, and... Um, Dawn Seawright said good afternoon, good, good evening to us. And again, we have Stan Ridley tuned in, Judge Armstrong tuned in, and a couple other people who had lost their names. Um, so, 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 like and, I said. And, and another thing, Damon, that, that the short video that they put was so human and refreshing. You know, I mean, like both, both your characters came out on that. And, um, it, 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 as as short as a clip it was, it did the it did the job. It did the job. That's what Sandy Barnaby said. Funny. Sandy Barnaby, when I first sent the clip out, that 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 was posted before the article, and yeah. when I first sent it up, she was like, "Yo, y'all actually captured everything." And, and very and endearing. Yes. Y'all captured the whole. Y'all summed it all up in two minutes. She was like, "It was perfect." Yeah, both so. your auras, both your auras came right through. You can feel it right through the through the video. Very nice, very nice. No, that's great. Yeah, no, I like the video. He did a good job. Absolutely. Good. Shout out to Seth. Oh, what was his last name? Seth. Uh, his name is Seth. I can't think of his last name. He was the photographer and the videographer of the article. Um, Oh yeah, speaking of pictures, the photos, all the photos uh very nice as well. Very yes. nice. Yes. yes, he he did an excellent job. Seth Seth did his thing. Um absolutely did his thing. Absolutely did his thing. So um 
as I, as I get these, as my phone goes ping, 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 I see David sharing it everywhere. Um, that's good. I shared it on a couple of pages. Um, yeah, that, that article, you know, and I said this on Thursday's show, and I want to say it again here, um, speaking sp specifically for Damon, like I said, the George, the movement after George Floyd, what everybody was calling for, you know, criminal justice reform, Mike Cato said hello. Um, calling hey, Mike. For, calling for hey, um, Mike. criminal justice reform and that whole thing and the, the need for change in legislation, it, it kind of, the world is just validated all the stuff that Damon has been saying for the last, what, decade or two. You know yep. what I'm saying? Damon has yep. been going, Damon And I've has, been telling everybody that, yep, exactly, and, yeah. And, 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 da yeah. and Damon was like, you know, they wrote him off as the angry black man or, you know, the troublemaker. Oh, there he goes again. No, a lot but of people listen. listen. A lot of people listen, but now they're paying attention. Right, and, and the world, and the, the internationally, people are demanding what Damon has been saying for the last 20 years that we need as far as our criminal justice system and the need for legislation and the need for criminal justice reform. So I just want to give him his props. And it's just like, everybody's talking about it now, even some who are just on the bandwagon, who are just repeating what is popular to say, but you know, only, you know, cause that's what everybody else is saying. But Damon has been saying this for 20 years. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, you know, bro. I um, appreciate that, man. I, I really, I really appreciate that. Cause, um, we gonna see what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, and, and, but but let's not forget. Let's not forget. That's number two, cause you just recently got the National Media Award for yes. uh, digital media. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean you guys are on on a roll right now. And 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 Damien, I don't know if if you know, but um, somebody from the um, a, a Latino from the AP. A journalist reached out to me, and he wants to volunteer his services for Black Westchester News Stories. Oh, that's great! And, I, well, and I, another hey. gentleman, listen to this one. Another gentleman who's an ADA for Scarpino mm -hmm. uh, reached out to me. He wants to do an article on um, on Black and Latino. Um, uh, why there's a lack of Black and Latino judges, attorneys and criminal justice, you know, workers. Yeah, no, that's needed. One of the reasons was because of his boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wasn't you know, hiring no black and brown, brown people, only hiring white folks. That's why he got, that's why he lost. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, ironically, this gentleman supported Mimi. Uh, listen, listen. That that was, that was an easy article for Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Patty Duke. He, he laughed. He said, "Ha ha, truth, great topic." Cheryl Blue, Bradley Fox, said, "Good evening, people." Before politics, fam. Lois Bastian. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, said greetings. Um, and um, yo, this this whole thing, the the award and the um and the article. But like, and all the proclamations, you got all the proclamations. Right, and thanks to Lorraine a lot. For, yeah, no, thanks no, thanks to, to, no, thanks but, but to the, uh, uh, the elected you, officials that gave them. Right, but you spearheaded that. You like you you navigated through that, and I don't want to give you props. But we, you know, when we first came out, and even when Lorraine first started affiliating herself with us, people, people, and one person in particular was like, oh. They're like that little blog's not going away. Nobody's paying attention to them. Nobody reads them. I had I had a white person tell me I'm probably the only white person that's ever gonna read this mess. Um, you know, and and they wrote us off and said, you know, like we we were just a so flash. The office blogs were jealous. They still uh, are. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no need to be jealous. It's not kind of much. I mean, so I don't it's good for whole, everybody. Just write your story, shit. I mean, I mean <laughs> It's just not. It's it's no need to get jealous about anything, man. Just cover what you cover. I mean, I, right. I don't understand. It I mean, because they they do sense. they equally do things. They do things their way. Rue Ross will be out on the scene of a fire or some situation. Yeah. Like I got to see the guy who died, who who in the, in the, in the water, and they had to get the body out that night. I got to see the whole coverage because I sat I'm sitting at my home because of Rue Ross. So he's good for that because I'm yeah. not going out to do all of that. 
Um, I, I just don't have time to do all of that, but he definitely covers that, especially in Yonkers. And, um, and Brian ha and Brian Harad, when he's uh, from News, um, Yonkers News, why when he's not moody, he, he puts articles. Up yeah, and, and he, he definitely shares yeah. articles about the county throughout the yeah. county written you know articles that are that 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 are throughout the throughout the county and about um you know that running uh lohud and news 12 and and sometimes black Westchester and other places and he shares all those articles with the people um where you can just go right there to his page and you can click on all those articles but he does his thing but you know we what we do is we you know we all do something different and and with us a lot of people wrote us off a lot of people didn't expect us to still be here. A lot of people didn't take us serious. And this article and that award kind of was validation um, of all the hard work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the hard work. Um, I don't know if we lost Lorraine video-wise. Yeah, she must be doing something real quick. Um, but we, we lost, we, it was kind of like vindication, like, you know, and, and yeah. it was good. And it was good coming from another media source that did this, you know, another media outlet spotlighting us like that. that uh, was the premier media outlet. Well, the yeah, because they're the only daily newspaper. So yeah. um, usually most municipalities, most municipalities make it their official um, newspaper for the uh, for, for their for their uh, municipality, like Mount Vernon, because they're the only daily, you know what I mean? So. I can't imagine what we do. I do it monthly, and I can't imagine doing it weekly, much less daily. And not at this point, not without a staff. At that point, we would need like a staff. Yeah. Um, shout out to AK Cole, no other than Atif Khalil, doing his thing with the Mount Vernon News Center. Um, yeah. Definitely exactly. keeping his foot to the like. When Ernie was in office and when Rich was in office, we were we were like on every little thing in Mount Vernon. And you know, we're not specifically a Mount Vernon media place. You know, we covered the county. And 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 he's been he's been the one that picked up the pace of being on every little situation that happens in Mount Vernon. He does not let it get past him. Um, no. <laughs> he and, does. And keep and keep doing what you're doing. And I and I no said no matter what they say. And I've said this to some people who don't agree with me, but since he's listening, he can hear it for himself. Yo, a lot of stuff they say about Atif right now, they said about me in 2014. Oh, he don't know what he's doing. Oh, he don't have all the information. Oh, he's just that and the other. He's not putting out the whole story. A lot of that stuff they said about us. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 um, I applaud him for you know getting involved. He 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 ran with us for a little bit and then. Want to do his own thing, and I applaud him. And he's doing his own thing, and he's holding it down. And he's, and he's doing consistent. It, he's consistent, yeah. And he's doing it his way. The Black Westchester, we're doing it our way. And a lot of people feel like, you know, um, we should be. We we're not who they want us to be, and the way they want us to be, and they have never been able to make us be what they want. And that's been a problem for some people. He's doing it his way. Agree or disagree, he's doing it his way. And, you know what and, I'm saying? Right, and a member of Chief, you know, um, you won't have to write about the dumb shit if they're not doing the dumb shit. <laughs> right. It, you, you know, it, you won't have to write it if they not, they're not doing it. But if they're doing it, you got to write about it. That's that's part of that's part of journalism. That's and part holding of people accountable. News. Right. When they do the dumb shit. You got to write about the dumb shit. And it's and as simple as that. It's not personal. You right. know, and, and as I said before, then stop doing the dumb shit. And then nobody has to write about it. And, and they still say about him what they used to say about us. Oh, he's making Mount Vernon look bad. So I'll answer that the way I answered when they said that about me. So you're saying I'm making Mount Vernon look bad or a teacher's making Mount Vernon look bad? By talking about what the people are doing, the people who are doing the things are not making my brother look bad, but me telling you is making my brother look bad. You but the funny saying? thing like, is, with a teeth is that the people that go on his page and complain about him and making my Vernon look bad or whatever, they go back and they post the information they get on their page. Right, right. You know, and so it's like, okay, 
you you don't want him talking about it, but you talking about it. And and it's funny because they used to say stuff about Sam Rivers. They used to talk about Sam Rivers, but they used to run to his page every time he wrote something. <laughs> like they would always know what he wrote because they was the first ones on his page to write. But they talked about him like a dog. But and they talk about a teeth, but they they're paying attention to what you're saying. Yeah. If I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. I don't even fucking follow you. I don't even watch nothing. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you be like, yo, you see so and so? No. Half the stuff I don't see if nobody don't send us a link. If Lorraine don't send me a link to what somebody wrote sometime, I don't know what they wrote. I'd be like, no, I, I, I ain't see it. And it is what it is. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Shout out to Marvin Church tuned in. Hey, what's up, Marvin? Another one who'd be like, yo, did you see what so-and-so wrote? I'd be like, nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know what's going on sometimes. I mean, just send me links. People be sending me links because I'll be like, yo. Right. And and I'm not even stretching what so and so is doing. It doesn't it doesn't affect me one way or another. You know, if I'm not if I'm not dealing with the person. Well, you know, cats would say they're not dealing with you, but then they be stalking your Facebook page for everything. Right, right, right. Everything you say. Like they like, they, like they, really? Like they talk on, they man. talk they talk about Damon and me, but they can tell me everything Damon ever said. <laughs> you know, like, I can't tell you what half of what they just wrote, but they can tell me everything Damon said and when he said it. But on Thursday, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Damon posted this, and on Friday, <laughs> Damon said this. But what the? Why did Damon say that? Yeah, Damon's a hater, but didn't he posted this? Come on, man, get out of here with that, man. I mean, and you then, know and, what? And then and then like uh, uh, uh like themes, they go back for more. <laughs> But you know the funny thing is though, what we're doing, Keith Olsen said, hey, what's up guys? Hi, Lorraine. Yo, hey, what's up, Keith? Keith, how are you? What oh, we're... by the way, excellent coverage with the YPD. Um, oh, two videos, two two posts went out. Um one showed um uh they apprehended yo, let me t let me tell you. Two of the, they posted that they, they, they are being transparent in the sense that two officers that had um, the, the uh, body um, cameras on, mm -hmm. they posted, YPD posted a video of them of a, a chasing a suspect. Let me tell you how interesting this is. First of all, by the time they caught this suspect, I was out of breath. Cause they ran so much and they caught him. When he they caught, <laughs> let me tell you, when they, I was out of breath. I was like, oh my God, thank God. And, but, but let me tell you what's interesting about this. Because if we're gonna, if, if we're gonna hold why, um, um, police accountable, we also gotta say, you know, we gotta speak facts. Absolutely. The gentleman that they caught, Damon, check this out was saying, why are you hitting me? Why do you want to hit me? Why are you hitting me? They didn't even touch him. They did not even touch him. And he started screaming, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. They were very gentle with him. They turned him over on his side. The guy had no idea that he was being recorded. And right away he went with, you're hitting me, you're hit. he, was, he was screaming for people can hear him. And he also started screaming that he couldn't breathe. No, he and, and see, on video. But, but see, this is why I don't understand why many police department unions, not talking about Keith, not, not, not my brother from another mother, but many <laughs> other police department unions are so against body cams. Body cams will help an officer just as much as we'll hold an officer accountable. Just like that incident, just like that incident, right here and there with Yonkers police, this guy is screaming and hollering, right? Yeah. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, all this stuff. If they didn't have the body cam, it would have been a situation. He would have sold him. Not it would have been though, a People heard him say that, and people would have exactly. been like, he was saying, I can't breathe. He was saying, stop punching me. You know, and 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 just to keep it even, not that I'm justifying it. That's what police have been doing. For no, I was going to say that stop, too. Stop, 
Stop resisting. Stop, stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. <laughs> stop resisting. The dude's handcuffed like this. Stop resisting. Bang, bang. Stop resisting. <laughs> like, because people will remember hearing that, and then they'll be like, well, the officer was saying he was resisting, and the officer kept saying stop resisting, even when they didn't see it. And that's, so, what this guy, right. that's what this guy was trying to do for anybody who heard him and didn't see it. They'd so, be like, you know, and, big and, shout and, and, out. Big uh, shout out to Yonkers. Yes. One more, one more, one more thing, because there was two, two incidents. Another one, um, Detective Stuart Boxdale. I don't know if you, do you know him, Damon? Mm -hmm. Good friends with, his, I know his father. Oh, okay. Remember, Let me I'm tell 30 you. years on the job. Let I me was, tell you. I hung out with his pops. Oh my God, you old. <laughs> 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 let, me, let, let me, let me tell you what he did. And, and you see this type of stuff going viral. Um, there was a, 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 a elderly woman in her uh, wheelchair, the a motorized wheelchair, it conked out on her. He pushed her several blocks. That's and you know, yeah, you're up to the city of Hills. He pushed her several blocks yes, and he is. did it without knowing that he was being a photograph. He had no idea. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean most actions are caught like when, when you don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But those are but those are good deeds, you know, and 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 that's you know, I mean that's what um um that's 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 those are good things, man. We have to see and we gotta applaud officers that do good job. You Absolutely. know, just as well as we put our foot in the butt of officers that mess up. Yeah. You know, I mean that's 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 what it's all about. And that's what management should do too. Balance it out, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's only right. You know, I mean, it's only right. I mean, they're public servants. And when they do a good job, right, we have to be able to say, you know, y'all guys, guys did did a good job, you know. But, I mean, they just set an example on what, how body cameras protect officers. Absolutely. They, don't hinder, they don't hinder officers from doing their job. They protect. They protect you. They when protect all the good officers that all the officers that do good, do the do the job right. They protect them. Well, I mean, if you, if you do wrong, I mean, if there was an incident, if, if there was an incident that 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 was negative, I, 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 NYPD, of course, I would say that as well. But knock on wood, nothing but, yet. But you know what? Even in those incidences, you know, it still protects them because they keep being accused of stuff they extra stuff that they didn't do. You know what I'm saying? So it's still protect. So Keith said to Lorraine, he said, "Yeah, he got tired watching that video, watching that too." He said, "He got, he got tired <laughs> just watching." You. It. And he said, the guy, it was rough. "He said the guy was released that day, and then did another burglary the next day." You see that? And then that? Pat, Patty Duke said, "Okay, Keith." They reform. But, um, Patty Duke said, "Okay, Keith," but that's a whole different topic of police reform than of how we address low-level crimes or repeat offenders, we can strategize ways to address problem behaviors in a, in a way that is not traumatic. So that was that was Patty Duke. But what I wanted to say though, um, before we talk about that, um, and I mentioned Keith, yo, what we do, we're just average guys on, we're just average people that decided that we wanted to speak up in our community and we're doing this like we're we're not any different than anybody else in the community you know we were just we wanted to speak up in our community we wanted to call out things that was wrong we wanted to help change the narrative you know there was no secret there was no big found no big corporation behind us no big money behind us we were just some average guys you know i just happened to be a writer and we and we use us or what our, whatever our, our talents and our gifts and and, and to help the people and that's and, and I say that to say that anybody can do everybody can do something. There's something that you can do in your community. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You might not be a writer. You know what I'm saying? Damon speaks at a lot of press conferences and speaks in law enforcement. I can't do that. Cause I don't know it like he knows it. You, you understand what I'm saying? But I, I'm a writer though. And I can document it. And that's what I've been doing. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's and that's how we came together. So um, I just want to put that out. Um, shout out to everybody else who just tuned in. Um, like I said, uh, Mark is going to try to come in, the author of the article on us. He's trying to come in um, in the second half of the show. 
Um, he originally was scheduled to be on the show. We were going to talk about the article. But um, I want to thank everybody on here. I said, been on Facebook. All the many text messages, phone calls, emails, um, Facebook posts of people congratulating us, for people saying that we deserve it. And uh, it's finally yeah, absolutely, you guys justice. do. We, we're finally getting re the, 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 what we deserve, recognition wise. Um, we greatly appreciate all of you. Um, there was many, 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 but it was some, some, I mean, yo, I, I, I was, I called Damon. I was like, yo, I don't often get, um, I don't often get an alert on my phone that said, Williams O'Shaughnessy liked your post. That's the guy who owns WVOX. <laughs> I was you like, gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. I was <laughs> like, yo, yo, <laughs> Bill liked it. Big Bill liked it. Yeah. So I had to shout him out, but yeah, we got, we got, we heard it from everybody. Um, a lot of elected officials, um, candidates, a lot of people in the community, and and and, and not just Westchester. You know, I got calls from Georgia and, and other places, and family members and stuff. So it was it was just good to see the hard work that we've done, the dedication that we put to this. You know, um, spotlighted like that because it's been a labor of love, like real talk. It's, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know. Me and Damon, we, and then we build a team. You know, we had um, Dr. Bob come involved, and he's he's not here today, but he's been very instrumental. Lorraine came on board. We had some other people that were down and not down no more. And it's like each person in the team is a movement by themselves, but we're a force when we're together. You know what I'm saying? Like the song says. You know what I'm saying? Like every person that's down with us is a movement by themselves. You know, I used to sing that to uh, my white Republican mayor boss all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he used to look at me like I was crazy. Did, did they know the song? He didn't no, know he didn't sing. know. Are you kidding me? He was a redhead. He was ginger. He was pure white. <laughs> he didn't know it. I, oh, that was the other thing that shocked me in the article, that Mark actually knew my group. And started putting, he put the link to the group and the, the whole nine, the song and everything. I was like, he was like, yeah, yeah, I know the group, I know the song. Man. Like, I, that that shocked me. I know, well, that, I know. That's, that's um, that's part of good journalism, man. Oh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. That, you did that, this thing. That's part of good journalism. <laughs> but not only that, not only that, uh, you caught you caught the eye of other journalists. Yes. You caught yeah. the eye of other journalists. Like I said, two reached out to me. One from the AP, and the other one from you know, um, he was for the ADA. He's part of the Hispanic Republicans, um, and he's very active in politics too. Um, but but he's also he also writes. He's also an author. And um, they they and they they um when they came to me, I, you know, I let him know it's like an intern type of thing. And we ain't got no money to pay you for no articles. And they was like, no, 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 no. We wanna we wanna donate our time. And and I greatly appreciate that. And that goes for anybody. Like we do take submissions. Like. If you really have something that you really want to address a topic or something and you want to write something together, um, you know, we will definitely, you know, um, 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 run it, you know, we will definitely accept submissions. And if you got something, you can always write a letter to the editor. We always encourage people to do that as well. Um, so we can, so in being the voice of the community, we can express various voices of the community. No, I'm you know, that. speaking of speaking of Dr. Bob, real quickly, I just want to give a shout out to Deputy Mayor from Yonkers, Steve Levy. Um, Dr. Bob had an issue, and um, he wanted to speak to his council member, um, but I I I I didn't I didn't think the council member was going to give any results considering who the council member is. Um, so I I reached out to the deputy mayor while he was on vacation. And um, he took care of the situation um, right away, right away, right away. He had his, you know, got his number, had one of his commissioners, you know, make the phone call to Dr. Bob. And, and this was, you know, it, it, it was, when was it, yesterday? On the, uh, anyway, Friday, the Friday, 40, Friday, yeah, Friday around 6.30, Friday, Friday, Friday when, it, you know, they were off work. And um, they, they, he took the call and handled it immediately. And I just want to go out. A, a big shout out to him because he knew that he was dealing with somebody from Black Westchester and you know he's got the utmost respect 
for you guys. So he handled it right away. Oh, talking about updates. So Damon, I don't know if you've seen the Facebook post, but there's a Facebook post that says that, um, remember we were calling Thursday, why is the officer still on the street? Why is he still involved? And there was a Facebook post that says he is no longer on the street. Um, him and another, I, him and, 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 and yeah, somebody yeah. else, not just him. Yeah, it was, and our article, our show was Thursday and I saw it Saturday. So either Friday or Saturday, he was, he was taken off the street and as far as- It was three of them, three of them hmm. that got taken out. I, I think that's good. I mean, for the integrity of the police department and the integrity of the work that, that officers do, I mean, it's the most common sense thing to do at this point. Yeah. And, that, and as we see with the, the, the Yonkers officers that we covered, you know, once Dario Tanner went out the window in the whole Jamal Smythe case, uh, Janet Janet went and indicted those two officers to cover her butt, though, because she prosecuted many of their cases. But there were 20-something pending cases, and because these officers were no longer credible witnesses, all those cases, they didn't even see court. They just got thrown out. You know what I'm saying, and and, and that you you were risking that with this individual, um, with all of his. They say he got like 500 arrests and all this other stuff. You know, um, um, ha. Huh, Keith said he wants to hear more about my JVC Force days. Oh, okay, that's that's another that's 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 another show. We'll do that another time. <laughs> <laughs> that's another show. Well, for everybody who doesn't know, so yes, I. Started out, um, I was a rapper back in the days um, with a group called JVC Force. Um, the record. No, I spit out us, a couple of bars for us, AJ. The, re the record most remember us for is a song called Strong Island. At the time, I was living in Long Island, and it was the nickname. It was like the hip hop nickname for Long Island, and that's back in '88. Yeah, I'm dating myself, and to further date myself, it came out six months after. KRS South Bronx came out. So, you know, that <laughs> it was on the same label. So, um, you know, that, that, um, that's what's all that's all that's about. Um, Keith said Strong Island. Yeah, that was the name of the song, Strong Island. And um, it was an underground classic. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, back then we didn't have, everybody didn't get videos. We didn't have a video for it, um, but it did allow me to tour the world a couple of times, see places I never would have seen. Um, interact with cultures I never would have interacted with on a on a real. Um, it, it 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 did do all of that, and and, and um, I'm proud of that that chapter of my life. Um, then, you know, chapter, brother. I mean, absolutely, you should be proud, man. You know, I, I'm proud that, like in August, was the 32 anniversary, the 32 anniversary of the the album coming out. In January was the 32 year anniversary of the single coming out. And I was just like, yo, I'm happy. Yo, I'm honored that people want to actually hear some rhymes that I spit 30 something years ago. When sometimes they don't want to hear from these rappers what they spit six months ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, like really, right. some people, people ain't listening to some of that stuff later. And that people still, and overseas is huge. We, we get mad love overseas still. And um, we got unreleased material still being sold out there, and, uh, and you know, occasional checks coming from that, which is a beautiful thing. Um, shout out to my partner William Taylor, be love, my, my partner in rhyme. Um, so, did you guys hear what happened uh, last night in Melbourne? South Carolina. <laughs> no. <Chamberlain, Ethan Simpson. laughs> what, no. What happened? What, what happened in Mount Vernon? What happened? All right. <laughs> So it was nice outside, and it was a Saturday night, and there were parties all over. Oscar Davis Jr. posted that there was a party going on. You know, he put a picture of of cars in his in his driveway. There was a party. They they went into his private home and parked in his driveway and kept it moving to this party next door to his house. And the party was going on till late last night, and it started at four in the afternoon. Sean uh, Mayor Sean Patterson Howard, I guess she got a lot of complaints. She went out. They shut down. They, they, according to her, they shut down the Alamo last night. Another place, I, for, 
forgot the name of it, and seven house parties. These house parties were charging people um, to come in. They had, some of them had two DJs going on and like, uh, and, oh, and, she, and she made a statement that all, everybody is going to be charged um, for these parties. And she says it's not gonna be tolerated. Um, but something about, um, they're gonna be out there today and every day to make or to make sure that these house parties stop in Mount Vernon. Well, look at this weekend. This is the party weekend. This is Labor Day weekend. This is yeah. Party she said weekend. something about that tonight. That she knew it was going to happen tonight, and she said that people are advertising that there's DJs advertising parties that are going to happen, and she said it's not going to happen. Well, good I for was her. impressed. I I am so glad that I allowed you to finish that because when you said Oscar complained about the people parking in his parking lot. And you it was said funny. Mayor, wait, no, no, no. And you said the mayor's name. I thought you was going to say the mayor was at the party. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so I'm so glad. Let me tell you, so I thought that, that's that what he was going to say when I started reading it. I thought he was going to say, because he said the mayor came out. And I said, oh, hell no. But then I kept reading. And he, he said she shut it down. Oh, because that's, I swear, that's where it sounded like it was going. I was like, no, no, don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that. <laughs> So I'm glad I'm glad that it was that's not what you were saying and that she shut him down. And then good for her. Good good for her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. Couple, very impressive. We got a couple of laughy faces <laughs> that, about the man coming out to party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. Steven Simpson. Huh? Oh, and an, another announcement, um, since I saw Kenny's name, and I just put this in the paper. So the film, the the um, the killing of Kenneth Chain. It won another award, right? Right, but it was at Better the black, wait, but it was at the Black Film Festival and caught the attention of Morgan Freeman. Him and his partner has just signed on as executive producers and are now entertaining offers from distributors. Wow, Morgan Freeman, big move, Morgan. Kenny. Congrats. That, that is Freeman. amazing. Where's and, the applause? Applause! Applause! Oh yeah, I gotta yeah. I gotta, I gotta switch screens and hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. That's that's not this ain't BOS. This ain't um in the mix where I, I can just push the button. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got. Sound like Godzilla, right? Huh? Sound yeah. like Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. I gotta wow. I gotta turn the phone. But it was it was it was it was a good look though, and um. The article's on. Well, no, it's not on the it's not on the website. It's in the paper. I just I just worked on that on the paper. Um, it was him and his partner, um, Morgan Freeman, boys. The killing of Kenneth Chamberlain feature as executive producer Morgan Freeman and Laurie McCreary's. Their oh, their company is called Revelation Entertainment. They became attached as executive producers to the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain, um, and like I said, it caught their attention. It caught their attention um, because it was in the Black Film, um, South America Black Film Festival or something. And because it was a powerful story. It's, it's absolutely a powerful story. And, absolutely. And, and, you know, unlike Damon, I never had the opportunity to meet Mr. Chamberlain. Um, but like Sandy Barnaby, both of us, when we watched it that night um, at Pace, we both said, we felt like Frankie Faison did such a good job. We felt like we met Mr. Chamberlain. Like we felt like we actually met him. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and I, you know, um, Damon. Damon can tell you, Damon. Hey, Damon. I'm Mr. Chamberlain. If I'm not over speaking or mistaken, Mr. Chamberlain is responsible for influencing Damon to be in the Marines and and and, and corrections. Is that true? Yeah. Well, I mean, in That's what Kenny, said. Kenny, Kenny said, Kenny said, you're the father, you're the son his father really wanted. I did everything he wanted Kenny to do. Yeah, he wanted Kenny to go to the Marines and David went in and he wanted Kenny to go into corrupt corrections and David went. <laughs> he was like, he was like, David was the son my father wanted. <laughs> he always he said that often. Um, oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, but so, so Damon, you know, no, new Mr. 
<laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I think, yo, yo, big, big shout out to Kenny, man. Like, you know, like we have our heart to heart discussions all the time, man. And, and I, I and, and, and I, I tell him private and I'll say it in public, man. Like, you know, you did it. Like you can't, nobody can take this away from you, brother. You know, nobody can take yeah. it away from you. When you was reaching out to all these so-called people that, that supposedly, you know, help people in distress and, 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 and they stood by because they was either I'm scared. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Couldn't make no money off you. Oh, he's a fool. You know, so it, it, you know, I mean, you still did, you still, you still, you, you did it, bro. And you're still doing it. And, and I think it's a blessing, man. And, and, um, Hey man, I, I hope that, um, the movie is able to inspire people and able to do the change um, that's needed, man. It, it, it hope it's another conversation. If, you know, if, if, if that hits the big screen, I'm predicting, like the video, the eight minute something video of George Floyd caused a national outrush, out, outrage. I believe this movie will be even bigger. Because, oh, uh, yeah, no, it's gonna. It's, it's more. It's gonna be because it's more impactful than that. Like you can't watch that. Every yo, grown men was in there tearing up. I was, I was trying to fight back some tears. Like, I mean, you can't. Well, I watched it twice and cried both times. Right. You know, and even after the second time, knowing what was going to happen, knowing how it was going to happen, you know, I, you know, I, I cried both times because of the acting. I mean, yo, big shout out to Frankie Faison, man. Like he really, you know, you know, you laughed. You know, you was on the edge of the seat. You know, and, and once it got real tense, you know, a joke will slide in, you know, and you know he's going to die because of the because of the title. title of the story. Right. You know, but how they how they maneuvered it to the death was 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 so great, man. You know, and um, you'll stay on the edge of your seat um, from the beginning, you know, and, and it's a joy. It's, it's a very enjoyable uh, movie, and I think uh, you know because of the fact that it's about you know Kenny's pops, you know, and the struggle that he went through, you know, that night. You know, I, I wish much success, you know, but I think that's part one because part two, you know, is the struggle of his son to get justice for his father. Absolutely, absolutely. that needs to be a movie or a book. You know, that's Very that's nice. a movie. That's a movie also. A movie in itself, yeah. You know, that's that's a story that 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 needs to be told also. You know, um, part it two. Should, it should be a part two. You know, because because the what the family went through and and what Kenny went through, you know, just to get justice, it is a story in itself, man. Uh, absolutely. So. I'm definitely, I'm glad to have been able to document some of the struggle and, 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 and humanize it and show people what he's going through. I'm glad to have been able to be that pin to that, um, to, to get a, 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 a front row seat to that and be able to articulate it to the people. Because a lot of people did not still know like I had cousins that told me, oh, that's the one with the the, the old man with the knife, right? They, they came at the police. No, that's not what happened. Like just a lot of people, that's what they remember. You know what I'm saying? With, the, with what was in the news. And I'm glad right. that we were able to play a, a role in, um, and, and, and uh, you know, keeping that alive and, 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 and documenting his struggle and his movement and his fight for justice. And we will continue to do that. Until then, and and lastly, we got Mark um, signing in right now from Low Hood. But lastly, um, you know, I know we spoke about it before, but mentioned, you know, the the judge in the civil case had threw out um, the use of the word, the, the use of the n word by the cops, and, he, uh, and threw somehow, out a lot of stuff. And uh, yes, yes. One second, Mark, we can be with you. One second. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, um, Mark, what's happening, man? <laughs> yeah. He threw out, he threw out, he, they threw out a lot of stuff so the jury didn't get to see the whole thing and have all the evidence and he lost. But a judge, a new judge was like, oh, hell no. All that stuff got to go back in. No, well, no it's the appellate. The they appealed it. Oh, right. They appealed right. the decision. Yeah, so the appellate court and, right. it said that that judge said all that information has to go back in and there will be a new trial. So um, I'm rooting for that and we will bring you that as as, as soon as it comes. 
But um, moving on to the next, the, the reason I wanted to do this show, a lot of people by now have seen an article either online or in the newspaper about Black Westchester. And I wanted to invite the author on the show. Mark, Mark, do me a favor. Let me hear you say your last name because I mess your last name up every time I say it. So let me hear it come from you one time and then I'll know how to say it. Lungariello. 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 Yes. Okay. I, well, man, yes, you don't want to. I wasn't you, even close. You don't want to hear. <laughs> half, you don't want to hear half of the ways I pronounce it. <laughs> That's why I said, let me, let me, let, let me let you say it one time so I can direct. You could just Mark is fine. Mark. Is fine. <laughs> yeah. Most people know Mark from Lohan, so yes. So, so personally, this is the first time I actually see you face to face. I want to thank you for um, wanting to even um, capture what it is that we do. Um, and I was, I was, I was bugging out that it was actually part of the front cover. Like I was like, wow. Like I mean, you know, I was blown away by that. And it was an excellent article. Um, I just want to thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, bro. That was great. Tell the story. It's your guy's story, right? So uh, uh, it's funny because AJ was telling me that it was your anniversary and everything, and you know, he was he was saying, "Hey, maybe that's a story." And, uh, and that was just like, I didn't think that it was going to be a story, but I, I, I'm always going to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, what a story it is. Wow. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, for, for people that uh, I think know the website and the publication, it's, uh, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think somebody said on uh, social media that they consider it a must read in the region. And I think for people that didn't know what it is, it's kind of like an enlightening thing to just kind of know where uh, the website and everything's coming from. So, I, And I think that's, that's what it did. It, reached, it, it hit so many people that hadn't even heard of it or may have heard of it and didn't know nothing about it. Or some people... We get a bad rap. They be like, "Oh, that Damien Jones. Yeah, I know him. I'm not gonna read that." Like, or, or you know, or you know, they heard they heard negative things, and then they they read that article and was like, um, "Like someone Lorraine met seems like they got a better a, a, a better understanding of Damien and I and a, and a respect for us now, but they only knew what they heard, like a lot of other people, and that you know humanized us." And, so but but another thing is that coming from the Journal News. The Journal News, you know, my 54 years on this planet here in Yonkers, you know, it's the go-to place. It's the one. It's the it's the one you take serious when you're looking at journalists, when you're looking at stories. And, and, and to be, put, I got, I, I had a, 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 a many years ago, I had a front page, it's very similar, two pages. My my, Damon, check this out. My my the the. The headline for mine was from the mean streets to the halls of power. Oh wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. And it did and, and what she said is true. For some people, even though we've been doing a lot of stuff for six years, it made us official in some people's like, oh well, they're official yeah. now. It was in low like, like you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we're official. <laughs> you know, we made it oh. to the we made it to the big time. No, nah, I, I mean, uh, I think you guys, you guys are big time. Come on, you know that. Uh, but no, you, uh, I think Damon My God, and I, he's so nice. What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I said you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> these, guys, uh, these guys know my background. And before I, uh, you know, I was on the Journal News. I worked at weeklies and stuff. So I kind of knew, uh, you know, what it's like to, 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 you know, be at, uh, for lack of a better way of explaining it, a startup publication and stuff like that. And, you know, six years is nothing to sneeze at when you're talking about that kind of publication. And then, uh, you know, we all know, I don't want to like uh, uh, put them on the spot on, on, on the air and stuff, but like, you know, then they're posting these photos with all of these uh, proclamations from all of the, uh, <laughs> the politics stuff. So that's when I started to say, I said, you know what, I think, I think this is a story. And uh, the joke is, <laughs> It was it was lengthy uh, because originally they wanted it to be about half that, and I said I said really I said I spoke to like a bunch of people about this, so uh, luckily the Journal News uh, the editors I got to give them credit they said you know what take take the space that you need so uh, uh, when you guys write the novel about the history of the website and everything like that maybe I'll contribute a few uh, a few chapters or something you know yeah oh, yeah absolutely I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on that absolutely absolutely. And, and and you know what and 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 uh, AJ and I were talking about this. The Journal News just came out recently 
with a whole uh, um, thing about diversity and how they're going to be more inclusion. And let me tell you, they, they, you, you, you um, threw it out the ballpark with this one. It, amazing, amazing. You know what they said and what they promised. You delivered. You delivered. Oh. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, again, uh, just to be clear, I, I think this was newsworthy regardless of whatever the story was because, you know, I think we all know the kind of presence that, that's going on there and uh, that, the, that the website and the publication has, particularly with Damon's appointment to the, um, you know, the police reform uh, or the police training reform under the Latimer administration. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, it's your guy's story. I just got the, I just got the chance to write it, so. Now, we greatly appreciate that. And then, and then you had people like Mimi Roke say, "Oh man, I didn't know you used to be a rapper. I didn't know. I didn't know." <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, I've, I've always been one of the people that um, I want you to know what I'm doing now. I want you to know me for what I'm doing now, and then you find that out later. You know what I'm saying? Like, I some of my peers will walk around with the shirts with the names on it, and they, you know, they want you to know, and you'd be like, "Okay, what have you been doing lately?" I wanted people to, you know develop a respect for what I was doing now and then find out. Because she was like, oh, we never knew that. And I've had a few people that told me, yo, you've never mentioned that to me. So um, you, you've, you've educated a few people about me, you know, that the people didn't know. I was surprised that you knew the song or the group. I was I was actually, I called David, I was like, yo, he knows the group. He knows the group. <laughs> did you really, did you, did you really know it? Did you really, you knew it or you looked it up? I didn't know. I actually knew it and I, uh, I, I don't want to act like I'm like a, uh, a connoisseur of 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 this of this uh, sort of thing, but uh, when I you know then I I said I I knew it just I had a connection with somebody that happened to I think have a connection with somebody in the group or we never really figured that out right because you said rap division and I I think I actually worked at some label called something like that actually. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, maybe you were the connection, funny enough. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of radio promotions and and like. Um, um, college radio and, 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 and mix show radio, you know, not commercial radio. And, 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 um, and um, I did a lot of um, underground um, publicity, you know, the underground hip hop and rags, you know, so I, I was the one that got, you know, I worked Fight solo album. Um, I got, so most of y'all had heard about that. That was because of the work I did. I had worked that album, Fight from a Tribe Called Quest. That was one of the bigger projects I worked. And, um, and you used to write for The Source. Well, yes, I used to write. Shout out to Dave Mays and John Schefter. Yeah, well, wait. Here's the here's the funny thing, which which we did not talk about. Me and AJ used to manage groups. Oh, uh -huh. absolutely, absolutely. That's how we met. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We was in the entertainment and managed groups, and I used to have um uh, uh well, with broke broke me up with the relationship back then. Um, I used to have a whole studio in my apartment, and. Uh -huh. um, we 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 did a lot of we did a lot of interesting business. I met I met Damon. There were two gentlemen working on the possibility of a hip hop museum. That's right. That's and, and, and Mal Vernon. And and somebody we knew, somebody that Brian. he knew that I knew referred us together and somebody referred me to the other guy. So I thought maybe, well, since they both called me at the same time, I was gonna try to get them together. That, that did not work out. But me and David became good friends, so shout out to my and man. the rest is name, history. I think his name was Peter. I forget his name. Yeah, Peter something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, then, and then Mayor Davis stole the whole idea. Actually, and yes. Mayor Davis, <laughs> Mayor Davis wanted to make, yours a hip-hop museum, so he wanted to make it a hip-hop Hall of Fame. He wanted to change it and make it his own thing because he had a relationship with Dougie Fresh and Dougie Fresh's father. So, and then, you know, and then I would take David to all the events and introduce him to KRS and Cold Crush and all the hip hop, you know, pioneers, and they all loved what David was talking about doing. He had the, the blueprints, the architect, and everything already ready. And yeah, Jack, it was it was Jack Travis, one of the one of one of um, New York State's top black um, architects. Um, we brought him up to Mount Vernon. Um, DJ Cool Herc got him involved. We brought Jack Travis under Mount. He did a whole rendition of Fourth Avenue all the way up to the place. It was beautiful. He was gonna have his students do the majority of the work. And, you know, sometimes Mayor Davis does what Mayor Davis does. Well, Mayor Davis, <laughs> and now, now when I quote people, when I say stuff about people, this is coming from Mayor Davis. 
Mayor Davis, because he's told me this three or four times and I refuse to give him the idea. He said, oh, if I hear a good idea, I said, I will steal it. Like, I mean, like he tells you that. <laughs> you know? he, I was I was trying to propose that he needed to update somebody who could update his social media media skills and stuff. He wanted me to come in so and tell him so I guess Oscar could do it for him or something. Like, I, mean, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go in there and tell you, but then you're going to give somebody else the job. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to do it. But Mayor Davis, that's what he said. You bring him a good idea, he like it, he will steal it. So, But it was, I mean, you know, it was done. The city went the other way, right. and um, then it fell apart because a lot of the hip hop artists came on board because of AJ's history in hip hop, uh, connection with me, and understanding, and and the fact that we 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 put everything together with, with Jack Travis, and then it went left, it went left, and and the city went went another direction, but they still wanted the contacts that we brought to the table and not understanding the street culture, the hip hop culture. If they're not with this, we're not with it, or y'all gonna have to pay us now. And and that's where, and that's where it was, you know, the people were calling me. I was like, yo, if you want to do it, do it, get paid. Because see, we didn't have, you, you going to do it for us. They were doing it out of the love the of love. Hip-hop. Right, right. But since it wasn't no real love there and it became such a, a this big business thing or political move or whatever, people wanted money now, you know, and, and, and I think that's what really started derail it too, you know, but it's unfortunate because that could have been something, you know, uh, for Mount Vernon um, that will have been still around, you and know. They and they could have brought business and, and everything and people coming to see it, you know, so they would have been supporting the local businesses and stuff. And exactly. Could have had a well, somebody's going to hear this. Season. Somebody's going to watch this and, and, and they're going to oh, say, yeah, hey, that's what I thought of. There, there are several, there are several hip hop Hall of Fame type projects in the making right. throughout the country. Right. Um, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is actually adding some kind of extension or something right. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. Um, so there are so many other things, but this we're talking about the mid '90s though when this was when we were doing this. Yo, like, when Mayor Davis announced that, they put it on the stock exchange. What what's the ticker tape? What what's the ticker wow. tape in Times Square? Oh, the ticket. I mean, yes, yes. That's how big it was when he announced it, and unfortunately, he couldn't come through on it. I mean, and then by the time was well, like two years of him, the city not actually doing it. Then some other people got together and they started doing almost like pop-up shops, you know, in different in different areas having having it. And then it was it was over after that, man. Yeah, Cool Herc and them did the, like a bus tour. Like it yeah, would take yeah, you through yeah. the Bronx and other places. And yeah, this is yeah. the building where this happened, and this is the park where this happened. And it was like a bus tour, like a like, you know, and that they I think they did that. But I want to shout out all the people that was involved. But yeah, that's how that's how we actually met. And then we became friends. And then we started managing a few artists. And, you know, with that, you know, we were getting, you know, cause I was getting Damon with Fat Man Scoop, we give him the tape to listen to it and all this other stuff and everybody. But, you know, when you got young guys and they got one foot in the street and one foot into this, they're not with you hundred percent. So no matter what you're doing for them, it's still, it doesn't go where it needs to go. Yo, so, we, was in Def, yo we was up in the office of Def Jam and everything. I mean, it was, it was, it was great. It, 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 it was great. AJ always said that I had Damon Dash looking at me funny. Oh, we went to, I, went, I took him to, I took him to, um, I took, I took Damon. See, see you got to think, this is the 90s. There was lots of money. Damon was working overtime. Damon had like the Cadillac truck and the Cadillac car. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like he had the jewels. Damon looked like he was in the industry. So we, we went to a Beanie Siegel listening party. Beanie yeah. Siegel was in jail, but his mother was there. So Dame Dash is telling us all the stuff. And when Dame Dash looks around the room, he wants to know who the hell Damon is. Because Dame Dash respects money. And Damon looked like he had money. He had the same kind of jewels on that they would have. He, you know what I'm saying? Like he looked, he had the, he had the phone and the page. And he had the, like, he was like, yo, who is this guy? Like he was trying to be, <laughs> so, so Damon was balling like that, but he wasn't in the business though. Like, but he looked like somebody who was that then, you know, Somebody with money would be like, yo, I need to know who this person is like. And I and I and and, and I never said anything. I just sat Yeah, he there. was just there the whole time. Like just there. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, was, was doing all the talking. I'm looking yeah. up, I'm down on my pager, 
you know, but it, it is what it is, man. We he had was a good saying time. they're looking all cool. Yeah, we yeah. had a good time. It was a good, it was, I mean, it's been a good run, man. Charlie. So that was that, that was Urban Soul Media Group. And then when I came up here to take care of my mom, um, they even took me out a couple of times to get me out of the hospital just because I'm there every day and I needed a break. And um, told me the idea. I think um, I went to one of his press conferences with the four parole officers and he gave me the video and they got pulled over and held at gunpoint with badges around their neck with New York State parole on their chest and a gun. And I basically wrote an article. If it ain't safe for them in the street, what a chance an average person like me got? <laughs> like that's basically right. the, the temperament. And I ended up being the beginning of Black Westchester. So Urban Soul Media Group, I mean, music group became Urban Soul Media Group. And we started Black Westchester in, 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 in 2014. That's it. Uh-huh. <laughs> we it could be a movie. Our, our story could be a movie too. Actually, <laughs> we do something big. Something big coming out of this. The the, the, the origin story is gonna be crazy though. Mark, yeah. I'm 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 interested. Um, of what drove you to be a journalist? What what drives you? What made you become a journalist? Ah, uh, geez, that's a uh, that's a tough question. I mean, um. I, uh, you know, I just, I, I wanted to write and then uh, I took a job uh, at a magazine, now defunct magazine called uh, The Nick Show, the Urban DJ Magazine. I know that uh, magazine. I actually yeah. wrote for them a little bit. I wrote a little bit for them too. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I freelance for everybody. Anybody I can get a check from, I freelance for everybody back then. Yeah, this is actually, it's funny uh, because, uh, you know, the, the, the they just uh, arrested those guys for Jam Master J. That was the first a uh, professional article I wrote was in the edition that was the memorial edition for Jam Master Jay, coincidentally. But mm -hmm. I didn't become a journalist until full time until many years after that, and then got into local news and, and that sort of thing. So I never really thought about it. Next thing I know, I'm, I guess I'm doing it for a living. So here I am, you know? Uh, yeah, I switched from the, after the rapper thing, somebody thought it was a good idea when my group broke up to have a rapper review other rappers albums and that's kind of like i got into and then i did the fanzines word up and black beat and all of those and then um russell simmons or somebody did something real stupid calvin butts wanting to steamroller roller over um the, the cds and stuff like that so i wrote a big article on it and then people's like oh he can really write like i wasn't just a rapper like like he can really write and then i started getting articles everywhere the village voice and all of those and covering mm -hmm. but this is the first non-entertainment based um, project I've ever worked on. Like even when I was doing news, I was doing hip hop news. Like when Jay Z or DMX went to, to court or something, you know, and so I got arrested. I would cover the court cases. You know, I see they had the same love, the same um, lawyer. I think he's from Yonkers. M Murray, um, what's his name? Murray, somebody Murray, um, big name lawyer, but he's from Yonkers. Um, and um, Murray Garner. No, Murray was the last name. Um, I can't think of the guy's name off the top of my head right now. But um, and then I ended up covering the um, Al Sharpton, Maddox, Mace, Maddox, and C. Vernon Mason um, defamation trial in Poughkeepsie. And I was up there every day for this Brooklyn newspaper called um, the Daily Challenge. It was the only black daily in the city. And um, that was definitely eye-opening. That, <laughs> that, that was definitely culture shock up there. Um, but, and then, you know, like I said, Damon had this idea and, um, you know, I just designed the site and we just started filling in the material. And then, you know, he had a lot, he would speak at a lot of rallies. I was basically covering a lot of the, rally, the rallies and press conferences he was speaking at. And because of them, I got cool with Kenneth Chamberlain. I got cool with some of the activists in the area and other people who, who's, um, who lost their loved ones to the police. And we started doing a lot of that stuff, Eric Garner and all of that. And everything. Um, and, uh, yeah, I wanted to say that's kind of why I, I, I thought going into some of your background was cool because uh, you know there there is uh, I think for people that aren't familiar with the publication, it, by showing the kind of uh, dynamic that you two have, I think was kind of interesting. You know, I think uh, people that follow local news had known Damon for a number of years. Right. You know, press conferences and that sort of thing. And, you know, you're coming from a little bit of a different place. And obviously, you know, you guys knew each other for years, as you were saying. But I, I thought it was kind of an interesting um, 
kind of when you look at the dynamic and I think the people that, you know, know you two or read the website regularly kind of understand the way that there's like this kind of, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This kind of the way you guys play off of each other a little bit and the different roles you play with the website. And uh, I think, you know, that's why I, I thought throwing your um, background in the hip hop scene and stuff like that was kind of interesting because you were coming to it really uh, fresh with, uh, you know, like you said, like a, a blank slate in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Damon had been talking to these guys for years, different uh, political figures, uh, union figures, labor figures. And uh, I just, I thought that was, I thought that really showed kind of the way that you guys play off of each other. So, you know, I thought that, that was relevant to the story, you know? And you know, the funny thing, since you said that, people would pull me to the side and said, I like what you're doing but you might want to watch the company you keep. <laughs> Talk about Damon. People were trying to drive a wedge between us in the very beginning. Even when they introduced me to Bob Marone to be on his show, that wasn't for Black Westerners, that was for me. In other words, that wasn't for Damon, that was for me. And Damon was like, nah, go ahead and do it. You know, I called him up, he said, go ahead and do it. And what turned out, I not only did I have a day, Damon ended up having a day anyway. Like, he got his own day on the Bob Marone show. You know what I'm saying? So it was just, it was great, but um, you know, we've always, um, you know, he's always had my back. I try to always have his back. You know, um, we've, we've, we've worked together and, and we've never let nobody drive a wedge between us regardless. Cause people tried to, people really tried that at the beginning. Like they wanted to do something for me if I wasn't, if Damon wasn't included. And I would just get on the phone and call Damon. Hey, uh, they told me they want to put me on the radio. He said, do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I represent, I represented us on the radio. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I thought that was also, uh, you know, an early focus of the story. And I think that comes through a little bit in the article is like, I know I just spoke to both of you guys about it is like, there was a little bit of a notion at one time. And I don't think, you know, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn when I say that, you know, some people thought of some of the viewpoints that, that Damon, some of the things that Damon was coming out with were controversial. And I thought Bob Marone actually said it very well. As a matter of fact, they used it as part of the headline when he was like, uh, you know, I don't think that the, um, uh, they moved more mainstream. I think the mainstream moved more towards them. A lot of what we're seeing in the, in the national debate and a lot of issues now, there's been a little bit of a vindication of, it, of, uh, mm -hmm. of the viewpoints, a lot of stuff that, you know, I, I think that, you know, you, if you go back, I don't know, uh, Damon, I mean, you'd have to tell, tell us how long you've been around, but, uh, if you go back, you know, five, 10 years, maybe you're not going to be appointed to a advisory. Absolutely board. not. I would, if, I mean, you're talking, you know, I've been in black law enforcement organizations since 1992, but I didn't come to the forefront to start speaking out to really, really at the detective Ridley killing. Um, uh, and I end up talking, um, because someone that was supposed to come didn't come um, to the press conference. So since that main person didn't, didn't show up that day, you know, I had to end up uh, doing the press conference. And from there, it just, it, it just moved forward. But no, absolutely not. I, I wouldn't have been on. I mean, I mean, at that time, they, even, at, even at the death of Christopher Ridley, you know, the talk about police reform was, was, was taboo. You know, I mean, you know, politicians at, you know, really at that time didn't pay it no mind. It was just a isolated incident, right? And, you know, especially up here in Westchester County. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, after, after Chris, you know, you, you had DJ Henry, you, you had Samuel Cruz, you have Kenny Chamberlain, you, 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 you have, you have Maldonado, you have, you know, different, different incidents in, you know, in Yonkers. So, you know, you, you had um, botched no-knock warrants, you know, in Greenberg, right? So you had all these incidents, and, you know, and, and I think that it, it, it took a, a perfect storm, like with the COVID, everybody being home, there wasn't no sports, there wasn't nothing to watch, it wasn't nothing to do, you know, but watch the news on, on who's locked down and, and all this COVID stuff. And then the world, the world saw for eight minutes and 45 seconds, a police killer man, 
you know, and I think it, it just woke everybody up. It just woke everybody up that there, there is a problem and we can't ignore it no more. Like for the first time, man, there, there was an elected official. I'm not going to say her name, right? But there was a, a high powered top, top elected official basically just like, yo, I don't care what the unions say anymore. Wow. Right. And she said it around people. Wow. Like you would never heard that. 15, 10, 15 years ago, you know, they would have not openly publicly, you know, speak that, you know, we're not caring what the unions say, we're going to go through this stuff. Right. So, I mean, times has changed, you know, and, and I think everything happens in this right time, man, you know, but I do feel vindicated for a lot of the stuff, I think, you know, because now, you know, CCRBs, you know, Mark, we've been arguing that Karen Edmondson, um, when she was president of the, of the Yonkers and NAACP, was pushing for CCRBs. You know, we, we've been pushing that for forever, right? And, and we're still struggling with that, you know? So even with everything's going on, you know, we still have to struggle to get a lot of these things done in Westchester, man, and throughout New York State, and throughout New York State. I was, you think that this, that what the discussion and, uh, you know, people call it a reckoning. You think the reckoning now is, is going to make a difference, that, you know, as opposed to like, if it came up, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Well, I think we have to capture the moment, you know, like everything else. You know, if, if, if we do not, if the people do not demand um, change, right, in this moment right here, I think it's over, right? I, 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 think, it, 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 I think it's over. You know, look today, um, the mayor in Rochester did a press conference. You know, and, and she said she hears what the people say. She's going to do police reform. Why does it take that much? You know, why, why does it take to the point that you got riots and burning and, 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 and all this craziness going on in your city, you know, for you to ask for, the, for, for elected official to come out, you know, and, and, and say that? Look, if we would have known that, we would have did all this 10 years ago. <laughs> We would have burnt, we would have set fires and did all that 10 years ago to, to, to get people to act. It, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take this much, you know, that, you know, when you see an unjust killing of a person, you know, and, you know, and just like I was having a conversation today or yesterday with, with a, a fellow law enforcement officer who was talking about the Rochester, you know, well, they didn't do anything wrong. I said, well, if they did everything right, he'd still be alive. He would still be alive. The man died in custody of the officers, regardless, somebody's gonna be liable because you're not supposed to die in the custody of, of officers. I don't care if you're the sheriff's, probation, parole, corrections, whatever you are, right? No one's supposed to die in your custody. So if you did everything right, you know, the person will still be alive, but it shouldn't take all this. Well, I'd like the officials to just pass, to, to pass some legislation and laws. It does, it's not, I mean, you know, so are, are, is, is she worried about her job, right? Or is she actually going to do the change, you know, because it's necessary, you know? And that's always in the back of my mind. Are these politicians doing it to save their job or are they doing it because it's necessary? Because if it was necessary to do, I think they would have done it about 10 years ago. I think the perfect, this, storm, the perfect storm thing that you said was right. It was the atmosphere of, of Trump, COVID, people being stuck in the house and seeing this, and it, it was it was a perfect storm. I mean, and, and it that all culminated to this point right now, to this moment. And, and people actually saying they've had enough, enough. Mm -hmm. So we have to see. You know, I told you I'm skeptical, man. I just want to see what's going to happen. And then, and then I respond to what happens. Well, I want to see what happens. You know, I have hope, you know, I have hope. And that's why I, I, I took to be on the board, you know, you know, just, just to be there and, and to make sure we, we have a document that is credible. You know, like last time when, when, um, when Chris was killed, they had a, they had a review, they, they, they had a review. And one of my mentors, um, the late um, Robert Goodstein, who, 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 who was a great labor lawyer and, and even um, did a lot of work for the county, you know, he was like, oh, you don't want to be on that. 
And I was like, why not? He was like, because you can't, you can't criticize it. <laughs> you know, he said, you can't criticize it. So I, I, I really, you know, tried to stay away from um, a lot of things, you know, because of, because of the advice of Robert Goodstein, you know, just in case if I have, if it's, I have to be critical of it or other people are critical of it, 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 it makes me look some type of way. But I think this is this issue is so important that that I that I had to be on, because if you if you're not on there giving some type of pushback, the 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 quote unquote law enforcement professionals that's on there will will um will run ramshot through the committee, you know, and you can't have that. Like we already had a little um, you know, tension when 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 the chiefs um put out that statement about New York City you know how can you you know be a part of um police reform and then you're against the police reform that the elected officials put together in in New York so you know i mean it's 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 growing pains corrections we went through it we went through it when they put cameras up all throughout the jail we had to change how we act when we when we was under the, a consent decree, we had to change how we act. We had to change how we 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 ran the facility. We couldn't just punch people in the mouths and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Like when I tell the cop, they say, Well, what do you do when you get spit on? Dude, walk away, call your supervisor, hope that you got a, a, a extra shirt in your locker, go to the go to the um, medical, get checked up, get cleared up put your other shirt on and go back on the block. <laughs> That's it. You can no. you just, you can't do that no more. In the nineties, you get spit on, you can be used to used to crack open the door and bust them in the head. And that was, and that was jail life, right? Now you can't do that. You can't do none of that. You will get fired. You, they will have you somewhere, right? So, you know, we went through all that. I think it's now the time that law enforcement is have to go through those growing pains. And if you don't like it, quit. They can hire that they they'll replace you faster than a New York minute. <laughs> There'll be new officers getting that money. So I mean that's 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 we'll see. That's all I gotta say, man. We'll see. And and I hope we can change it. If not, there's gonna be more riots. Mark, from your perspective, um how impactful um, is this article that the, the article you did on us? How impactful do you think that will be around the county? Well, for the move, oh, we lost, him. we lost him. We lost him. Yeah, maybe he has to sign back in. Um, well, that was Mark from Low Hud. I hope he's gonna call climb, um, call back in um, talking about the article that he did uh, on us on uh, in Low Hud. Um, yeah, great article, man. I, I'm, I'm just glad, even if he doesn't come back in, I'm just glad to, to be able to have the conversation with him like this. Um, you know what I'm saying? To, 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 to absolutely. You know, be able to thank him and and and, and hear his perspective of, of of it. You know, why he did it. Um, and he did push back because it was supposed to be a smaller story. No, listen, man. Big shout out to the editors. Yes. Of Loha for allowing him to uh they gave him cup lunch yeah yeah big shout out big shout out to the editors of low heart man because when lorraine first got a copy she was like yo it's the whole inside two page this the whole thing yo she was <laughs> she was like telling me i was like i still hadn't seen the inside yet you know i only seen the, the picture of the cover uh hector santiago said much respect to you all um, shout out to uh, Keisha Munn, um, Marvin Church signed back in, Brent Harvey, Sharon Vesta, Melissa Patterson, April Frazier, a uh, friend from Long Island, lives in the ATL. Um, and I think most of the other names I said, if I didn't call your name, I apologize, but I thank everybody for tuning in. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's 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 good it's good recognition and I'm I'm glad you know people got to know some of our story and um, you know I'm willing to you know try to take this to the next level um, 
Because it's a hard, but it's it's hard. It's just a lot of work. It's a lot of round the clock work. Like <laughs> it's a lot of work around the clock. And I couldn't do it without everybody. Like a lot of people do play small parts, but those parts are very, very important. Lorraine holds it down. Dr. Bob holds it down. There are several other people, but those two individuals are the main two that hold Absolutely. it down. They deal with Absolutely. my they deal with my crazy and my frustration when I'm trying to get the paper out and you know all of that stuff. And um, you know, um Bob's brought a lot of good ideas. Lorraine has brought a lot of people to the table. Um even some Republicans to come on the show that were warned not to come on our show that were like, hey, I like this show. I don't know what they were talking about. <laughs> He's like, I like this show. A couple of them want to come back. They want to know where they can come back. You know, and they so. even called you, and they even called you to tell you about me, warned you about me. Oh, yes. I did get Several one of those times. Calls. When, <laughs> when, when, when Lorraine first got in and she was on for a while, they were, um, it was a couple of calls. I like the show and I love everything you're doing, but, uh, you might want to watch the company you keep that Lorraine Lopez. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the wrong thing to say to me. That's be like we on the right we on the right path, and you know that's what they said about David too. That's the, we on the right path. Then. This is the team. This is the, exactly. this, this is the team that's not afraid to say it. We're not gonna, you know. A lot of people used to be like, you know, it's important what you do, but you don't have to put all the bad stuff out. You don't put enough good stuff out. And it, it's particularly. And my and this is particularly dealing with Mount Vernon. There's a lot of things that have been wrong for so long, and only writing good stuff and happy, happy, joy, joy about Mount Vernon is not going to change those things that need to be fixed and need to be um, got disconnected. Yes. Um, um. Yeah, Mark said he got disconnected. He's going to come back in. Um. Up oh, here he comes. Um. It was like ignoring it does not make it. Go away. Ignoring it is not going to solve the problem. Only to you address the problem is the only way to solve it. And we addressed a lot of things that people weren't addressing. You know, people were just going by. And that made a lot of elected officials that were in power very upset because nobody was addressing these things on that level before. You know, it doesn't right. get you on a lot of Christmas card lists, as is my favorite saying. There's some people. I will never be on their Christmas card list, <laughs> but you know we're not doing it for likes. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing it. You know, to, you know, it, 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 to to really do this kind of job, you 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 sometimes rile up some people. You sometimes upset some people. You uncover stuff that people don't want you to uncover. You share stuff with the public, stuff the residents that don't normally get shared. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like a lot of people. And then you're giving the people back their power because you're educating them. And that takes away from the power of those that have been abusing them and, and, and taking advantage of them. Mark, are you there? Is he there? Is, I know. Okay, he might be still trying to sign in. Yeah, so. Uh, hey, wait. David. Yes, ma'am. Did you see the video that Jason um, that Jason was Jason Blake put out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless him. You know, I was watching it today on the news. God bless him. You what know. do you think about that? No, I think I listen. You know, it's a blessing for him to be alive. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know he can't. He probably, most likely, um, it's it. He probably won't walk again because I I think they were saying that two of his vertebrae was blown out yeah. um, in his spine. So, you know, um, I'm not a doctor, but I think if you're missing two, you know, unless, you know, they got some super surgery that I don't know about, um, I think it, it will, um, you got you got to turn, you got to turn your, yeah, yeah, you're sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was trying to do that. I was like, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's it's touching, man. It, you know, a lot of this is so sad, you know, and, and you know, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's amazing because 
of someone that I'm friends with on Facebook is friends with his father. Oh, wow. And, yeah, yeah. And, and he, he had posted, he just posted a picture today. I guess he's down there. He, he took pictures with um, Blake's father, you know. You know and, and I told him, man, send, send the family our love here in Westchester, man, or whatever we could do. You know, you know, so, um, but this is the one thing that, um, we got to get used to, and, 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 um, this whole Zoom thing is supposed to the studio. I usually get that. There's usually, this is a rare time that everybody's quiet or not home at my house during this time. Usually, I got people, the bathroom's right next door, I got people in the, taking showers, playing music real loud, like, you know, got people having conversations outside the door, and you can't, you can't. Sometimes the range, you get all the all the dogs want to bark at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, Mark, Mark, Mark what he's trying to what he's trying to say, Mark, is that we can hear the background noise in in in, in your house. <laughs> I keep trying to I keep trying to mute it when I'm not talking. If you if you hear any kids screaming, yeah. So so, I was asking you how um from your perspective, how um with everything's going on, how impactful do you think? The article was this, this article that you had done with us. I I I got a lot of good feedback on it. I mean, it's like I said, I I, I kind of was writing it uh, from a perspective. Obviously, you know, there's some people that uh, in, in the community and stuff that know very much what the website is and what it's trying to accomplish, and there's some people that don't. So, I kind of was writing it for for both audiences in a way, um, and I think it's important because it's like I said. Uh, you know the story. Uh, the story at the beginning of the article. I I have to laugh. Uh, <laughs> is it okay if I tell this? Is it okay if I tell the story? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I interviewed Damon, and the the beginning of the story is that uh, there's a, a prank phone call to a, a TV station uh, about a, an event for seniors in Mount Vernon. Uh, actually, it, actually, it wasn't a prank. They were trying to get them to come cover it. Right, no, the, 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 that wasn't the prank, right? Yeah, but yeah. then the, yeah. afterwards, there was a call that was a, that there had been a shooting. Right. And that they, they said they would send somebody then, where two seconds ago they had said they weren't. But they, were, the yeah, funny, they, had, no, they had no vehicles, and they had no vans, and then all of a sudden, yeah. it'd be right there. Yeah, yeah. Right. But here's, here's what's funny, and this will be behind the music uh, <laughs> of uh, the article and the website, but uh, when I spoke with Damon and interviewed him the first time, he... He told me it as a hypothetical. He didn't say that he had actually done it. He, he said, uh, you know, if you were to have called uh, a TV station and done this. So then I mentioned that uh, when I was interviewing AJ and he said, no, 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 no. That was not a, uh, a metaphor. He actually did that. Yeah. So then I, I went back and re-interviewed him. About, but, you know, um, look, you know, we're all, we're all journalism people. We're all reporting people. So we get it. Look, you know, if there's somebody shot, if it's a life and death situation, you know that you have to send somebody to cover that, even if you have them assigned elsewhere. But having said that, I thought that that really encapsulated why I wanted to tell the story to begin with, which is uh, why that, that different perspective and different point of view is so important. Because I don't, think it's, I don't think it's unique. And what I mean by that is I don't think you're the only person that feels that way. You know, that would say, okay, uh, corporate media, big media comes in and swoops in when something bad happens, but they're not telling stories from the other side. And even, even you know, um, specific stories, right? We had uh, Jamar Smythe and uh, Louisa McTurner in there as well. Those kind of things where it's just like, well, uh, it's not that my story was only told in Black Westchester, but it was told with a specific viewpoint and a specific care or specific right, right. perspective that maybe is lacking and i think that's important i just think that that's what people um uh you know should know about this for and you know i think it's interesting uh you know we brought up earlier about like some of the initiatives that are going on in terms of trying to get diverse voices in media and uh i think that's why right i mean i think that's why that it exists why somebody like Smythe had you know written letters to several media publications and, and didn't get an answer that sort of thing um, so yeah, I just, I, I think that there, I think that there is, that, that that's kind of what I was approaching the story for, uh, from that perspective to begin with, which is like, well, why is this kind of, um, publication necessary really? 
Right. Right. And then, and then I had to laugh. Like when you told me you reached out to Richard Thomas, I was like, I was like, yes, please reach out to him. Please reach out to him. I wanted to know what he was gonna say. Like, <laughs> and then you put, and then it was the um, the the fight, the fight challenge. That's everybody's still talking about that to this day. My my my, my stepmother. Oh, God, that was the funniest. She, she's still talking about that to this day. She was like, <laughs> I think that's the first time she. And really then he said, "Oh no, it was a video game." <laughs> that's right. I remember the video, the Wii, and. Uh, <laughs> My former colleague, Jorge Fitzgibbon, I remember writing that. So, but you, you know, it's funny, I didn't, I've totally forgot about that, I have to be honest with you, until I was writing the article and I went back to the archives and I saw that come up and I, I had a little bit of a laugh and I, but you know, look, uh, I have to say, I give, I give uh, Richard Thomas credit because I had reached out to him and I said, here's what I'm working on. He probably, when he saw my phone number came up, if you had asked him to give him a hundred different articles that he thought I would have been calling uh, to ask him to for a quotation, I'm sure that would have he, it wouldn't have made the top 100. <laughs> right, right, but, right, um, right. <laughs> but he he spoke and guys again. <laughs> but you know what? I think he. Uh, I, I have to say, uh, uh, as an outsider, as a as somebody who wasn't you know employed by Black Westchester or anything like that, I think that was uh, the Thomas administration was a big part of your guys. Uh, uh, coming out party, so to speak, right? I mean, would you guys disagree with that? I, I really thought that um, the Thomas administration, Rich Thomas kind of coming in as a council member, becoming mayor, and a lot of the ups and downs of the Thomas administration, I think a lot of the growth of the website was hand in hand there. That's when a lot yeah. of people, I think, started to really know who you guys were and stuff like that as a publication. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, because it just caused, it, it just caused a lot of drama, man. And, and, you know, even, you know, with the whole issue with the cupcake shop, you know, it, it brought, it brought the issue out. It, 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 you know, it, it, it forced, um, other, um, even what they call major, the, the, the twos and the fours and the seven news that, that covered it to talk about the, the, to talk about the magazine and the, and the quote unquote beef between the magazine and the administration, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and I think we steadfast on that, man. But, um, you know, it's, a, it's still, it's, it's still, a un, it's still an unfortunate situation, but you know, what, what the main thing is, is that elected officials, you know, sometimes feel that, you know, we're going to look the other way, you know, and, and when you criticize, Right there, right you know, there. And when you criticize or, or when you write about, you know, you know, Mark, we were just talking earlier, you know, we can't write um, the dumb stuff, right, if they're not doing it, right? So, so it's like when, when you have bloggers or, or, or people that are, that are writing about things that go on in, in, in government and those elected officials take it personal, you know, instead of understanding, you know, you know, it's our job. You might not w like the way it, it came out, you know, but if you didn't do it, you know, we wouldn't have to write about it. Right. So, so, so why be offensive? Why be, um, um, why retaliate? Why do all this other, you know, crazy stuff because of something that you did, you know, and, and you blame us for, for, or you blame anybody. You know, we was talking about um, um, a, a Teep Coleman who, who has a who has a a, a, a Facebook page called um, Mount Vernon News Center. Center. You mm -hmm. know, so now he's be, he becomes the enemy because he's he's writing about um, what's going on and he's questioning the actions of of the politicians. I mean, that's that's that that's what we're supposed to do. I mean, that's that's part of being the fourth of the state. You know, and if and if they can't. You know, if, if they can't take it, you know, move on, use whatever information that they can use. Because a lot of times we're just not criticizing. I mean, we're giving we, we, we're giving some suggestions. If it's within our power to give those suggestions, you know, take it and, and move forward. You know, you know, but I mean, people like to get personal and, 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 and get all, you know, it's just ridiculous, man, you know. You know, with, with um, what was interesting about the Richard Thomas situation that you're talking about. So when I first, one of the first stories that I wrote, major stories about was um, 
they were my take, it was a march for Memorial Field. I was like, yo, they're marching to save Memorial Field. I was like, anyway. So I went inside. I had been in Atlanta 10, 12 years. I came, so I decided to walk inside Memorial Field, sort of crumbling of the bleachers and all that. And like, it was one of those moments, like almost making a grown man cry. I couldn't believe that this park had deteriorated that much. So I wrote this big, passionate editorial. That is what made Richard Thomas tweet me for the first time to try because he wanted to talk to me about Memorial Field. And then I actually got to know him and he asked me to be involved in his campaign for our social media and stuff like that when he decided he was going to run. Most of the things that I, in the beginning when I wrote about Richard Thomas, I would call him and try to have these conversations with him about the things he was doing or the decisions he was making. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, and try to talk some sense into him. Like I would talk to him privately first. A lot of people don't know that. So we would have talks two, three, one, two, three in the morning, like have, you know, about some of the stuff that went on. And even at a point where everybody else had wrote him off in our camp, you know, I was still having these conversations with him. And um, like sometimes he would call me like, why is everybody, you know, feeling this kind of way? And we would have these conversations. But, you know, it comes to a point where if I'm telling you and I'm telling you and you're not getting it, then I got to just put it out there. Like, you know what I mean? Like I tried to take the approach of going to you first, which is not normally what we do in our, in our profession. We, you know what I'm saying? It's not our job to like do that. But I actually wanted to see him succeed. So I would actually try to talk to him first. And it just wasn't, it wasn't sinking in. It was going in one ear and out the other or whatever. So I, I addressed it. I then, then I spoke about it at the city council, which is a thing that I never did. I would cover city council meetings. I wouldn't speak, but I, I, I would speak at that. And then when I did write in the editorial, it always said, and Rich, I, we've had this conversation. I, I, we've talked about this and now I'm writing about it. And I think that was what was a little different because you know that's not, not normally what um, a newspaper or a media outlet would do. You know what I'm saying? When, you know, then there was just some stuff that I couldn't overlook and I just had to, you know, I wanted to inform the people. It, it's funny because he came out, he came into office a year before Trump and Richard Thomas and Spezia were almost playing from the same playbook, um, referring to us as fake news, um, challenging our credibility, um, putting stuff out there that wasn't true just to keep trying to change the, the, the narrative, you know, and they, they were doing a lot of that, putting out a lot of misinformation. And we were day to day to day having to correct, like you see on MSNBC, do the fact check or Washington Post, do the fact check on Trump. We were doing that day to day to day with the Richard Thomas administration. Let me and tell I you think something. that's what that, like you said, that's one of the things people got to know us for. Well, that, you know, and, and that was so unique too, because if you look at what the dynamics is going on in the White House, um, you know, taking having having the 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 head law enforcement person, right? And 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 who's the head who also the head lawyer, right? Bar, right? You know, defend the the possible criminality of the president. It it is parallel and and what they did with the departments in the in in, in the city. You 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 had your Corporation Council and your police commissioner do the willing of, of 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 the mayor, right? When shutting down illegally, shutting down businesses, and then your corporation council will will, will make cover legal cover of the of, of the legal activity, right? It, it's the same. It's so much. It's so parallel to Trump. I would. I thought. Joe Spezia was talking to Trump every night because because the whole thing it was it it was the most craziest thing when you when when you watch what's going on and you see what's going on in in in, in Mount in Mount Vernon at that time they were doing the same thing they were literally doing the same thing and um and 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 the city council were powerless you know they they, they were literally powerless you know because if you have you have the lawyer you and you have the and, and you have the head of the army, which is the police department, right? You control the city. That's what Bob Barone said. That's what concerned him. He who controls the police department controls the city. Exactly. Exactly. They, you know, so that was you know, and, and I really think down the line, I don't think I think that police commissioners or 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 
chiefs that work on the, I, I think they, they should be elected by the people. They really should be. Because, because when you work at will of, of a mayor that, that, that has a possibility to be corrupt, right? You're going to go along with the corrupt actions to keep a job. You know, and it's and it's and it's really and, and, and it's really unfortunate, you know, that that we have to do that that we have to get to that point. But I mean, I'm not just even talking about Mount Vernon. I'm talking about a lot of other a lot of other cities in in, in America that you know they upheld uh, uphold a, a lot of corruption. You know, that's in that's in their politics because of the fact that that commissioner works at the will of 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 that elected official. You know, so you know, I, I I think that should that that should be something that that should change that should change also. You know, I mean the the, the police commissioner should should be elected by the people, and then he'll then then he'll work at the will of, uh, at the will of the people when there's corruption in in in, in the other um, in the other uh, other elected officials. You know, because this is this is it's ridiculous. You know, and that's one of the reasons Scarpino lost. You know, because he did not address the corruption. You know, how many people, I mean, you, you, you had a city council being assaulted. You know, and nothing happens. Nobody, nobody gets interviewed. You know, that's crazy. You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. That, that's so disrespectful, you know, you know and, and that shows just lack of respect, you know, for, for the process of the law. At least interview people. You didn't even interview nobody. You know, and I know for a fact I I brought a witness that nobody knew about that was in a cat that that was a cab driver that was sitting and saw everything, and the, and the only reason and, and 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 the only reason I found him we were talking one day. We we were because when I was living in Mount Vernon, he 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 worked for that cab company across the street from the building I live in, and and I, we were just outside talking because he was sitting in his cab. You know, and he was telling me, you know, yo, I saw the, the mayor's brother hit somebody. And, and, and I was like, I was like, wait a minute, where? You know, and, and he told me, I said, you was there? He was, yeah. And yes, I took him to the DA's office. <laughs> I took him to the DA's office. And he said anything. And then they never called him back. <laughs> you know, so here you have a witness. Here you have somebody there. Right, and he didn't want to go in there because basically he he had a lawsuit against the police department and for false arrest, right? Wow. So 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 he he didn't want to go in there, but on the strength, we went in there together, and they never called him back. He never called him back. So I mean, you know, they all needed to go, and and I think Scarpino, I think Scarpino definitely needed to go because he did a real disservice. You know, and it wasn't just me going going to the DA's office. Um, Clyde Isley, who former police commissioner, former correction commissioner, you know, said publicly he went up to talk to Scarpino that this that that this uh, enough is enough. You know, you you had you 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 had the whole city council have a press conference in front of the police department <laughs> ask for intervention. You know, what else do you need to act? Right? Other people bring in information you know, documents, you know, these are the things that was going on that they were trying to get Scarpino to, to do something, you know, and, and he literally, and he literally did, did anything. He literally did anything. And it was, and it was, you know, a lot of that stuff would have never happened if, if, if uh, Scarpino would have act, you know, if he would actually had an investigation, they didn't have no real investigation. I think, I think, I think, Mark, that's one of the things when my phone rings at this point now, it's usually someone in situations like that that have nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. When, when um, they were illegally shutting down OK Freddy's, regardless of maybe what he did or did not do, but the due process, it was the lack of due process, he was given my card. When, 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 when Louisa, when Louisa, when they were trying to do, she was given my card by another media person because <laughs> they knew that I could do what they couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? And that's, so that's at this point, that's we, a lot of my calls um, or people will call the ring to, 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 to get some to me, you know, 
or, or reach out to Damon. So that's that's a lot of the calls we get now. Coming close to the um, end of the show, I wanted to give you a chance to say anything that you wanted to say, anything we didn't ask you, anything you wanted to say about the article. I wanted to, you know, give you some more talking time. I appreciate that. No, I mean, you know, uh, definitely check it out if you haven't got the chance in, uh, on loha.com or uh, Wells in Print, uh, what was that, yesterday now, so you could... Uh, Friday, uh, yeah. yeah, get back Friday. Yeah, get back to the archives. But uh, I, I, I was interested in you saying that because when you say what you can do and what you can't do, do you mean um, that you're able to kind of put opinion in, or that you you could kind of be more of an advocate than you would be if you were, you know, trying to play more like straight reportage, or, or or what did you mean by that exactly? Well, well, actually, you know, and not to put the person out there. I mean, we can talk offline. They felt like their bosses would not let them give the attention that the story deserved. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and putting a spotlight on it the way it needed to be. And that person referred her to me. She had already reached out to me because we did a spotlight on her before um, in the beginning of the paper, like 2017. But, um, you know, um, she was referred by that person because she was like, and then that person called me and was like, she needs Black Western. So that was the exact quote. <laughs> she needs Black mm -hmm. Western. Because um, we have been more of the advocates as well, you know, um, um, like what Damon said, you know, taking the person up and going with them that didn't want to go by himself. You know, um, with Jamal Smythe, Damon worked and, and, and gave his wife a lot of information, the wife and lawyer, a lot of information that was very instrumental to, to helping them, them get him out of jail. You know, Damon, with that law enforcement experience, was able to you know, tell some people the questions they need to ask and the things that they, the steps they need to take. And we're, we're able to do, I'll put it this way. This is the best way to put it. I don't work for anybody. I don't have a boss that tells me I can't do that. Mm -hmm. or I can't write that. Or we're not going to do that. You, you know, I think that's the difference. So okay. when we make the decision to do that, we don't have to, you know, we don't have nobody coming down like, no, no, you can't. What, what did you say, Lorraine? I missed you there. Did you, uh, did you chime in? I missed you. No, uh, no um, I, I, I got to go. But before I go, I wanted to say it was really nice to meet you, Mark. But I also wanted to point out that Black Westchester is, is twofold. Um, it's, it's got the print edition, but it also has what we're doing today the people before politics radio show and black Westchester has been very instrumental in not only interviewing a lot of high profile people in Westchester County, but people that are running for office, Jamal, Mondaire, Mimi, all judicial candidates, you know, um, we've been able to um, bring them on the show and the guys have been able to interview them. So black Westchester, not only has the print issue, but it also has an amazing people before politics show that that brings um, the news to the people and and especially when they're running for office and gives um, gives a person the opportunity to see both candidates, three or four candidates, and 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 so that they can in, um, make an informed decision. And with that, I have to go. Bye, guys. See you later. Yeah. I think we asked some questions that the other media may not ask that our community wants to hear the answers to. I think, and again, that's what you said, having a media uh, format that speaks to your, your your demographics. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think I think we do a little bit more of that. Um, that 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 that's you know that's been something that's been said. Yeah, a lot of people I interviewed uh, said that you know it wasn't necessarily a. Um, a uh, reporter or a public, you know, somebody that you place an ad with relationship, which I think I was really trying to outline in the story, you know, um, and uh, AJ, I know your quote up top said something, you know, that we're not orthodox, uh, you know, we're kind of uh, unfiltered sometimes and we, we do our own thing. I'm paraphrasing. But uh, I think that that's what, what came out. And I think that that's, I think that's what makes it an interesting, uh, uh, a story and, and definitely an interesting place in Westchester County now, you know, and it's like, uh, I know we've talked about it uh, as some of the larger publications have, have pulled back. We have like what, what a lot of people refer to as hyper local publications. Mm -hmm. That's where my background is, you know, like something, a, a specific town, like, you know, I wrote for East Chester, for example, 
and you just write everything in that that town or like you know specific uh you know different publications which you might say are non-traditional media uh with different viewpoints and i think uh you know i think that's what you, what's interesting now because i think people are relying on that more and more whether it be something a little bit more established like you guys or you know some of these like uh, opinion blogs that we see pop up in different towns and villages and cities i think people are relying on that more and more because they don't get the the local 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 hyper local coverage that they used to you know 20 30 years ago from some of the larger media right and i also want to um and i've said this to you and i've said it to him and i've said it on your show that you have with him phil reisman his editorial taught me the difference between doing the like news coverage and an editorial and i started a column real talk from aj woodson that was inspired by Phil Reisman. So where I can do the news, but then I can actually express what I have to express and in, in, in a column form. And I kind of, now I do my own thing different than how he did it, you know, but I, I was inspired to create that column after reading a lot of his editorials like that. And I've told him that too, and I've, I mentioned it to you. And I just want to say that. And, that. and that has helped a lot because then I can then sit back and then address what needs to be addressed, where the news is kind of like who, what, where, when, and why. You know, you really shouldn't have an opinion. You might get a quote from somebody who thinks like you think, so you can get them to say, you know, use them as saying what you, but you're not supposed, but in the editorial, you can, you can have that educated opinion and people tune into the show to hear me and Damon's opinion. And it allowed me to write like that, you know? So I, I got to for very early on in the website, um, it was Phil Reisman that inspired me. And then I was able to separate the two and then focus on news when it's time for focus, but focus on editorials when it's time to focus on editorials. Yeah, I, it's funny. I, when I used to do the show with Phil Reisman on uh, WVOX, I think you two were a guest yes. of ours. Uh, well, very Specio early. called in. Yeah. Right. And Yo, I remember that. That was a classic. That was a classic. Yes. I remember being very uncomfortable on the air uh, for some, but it was, it was good radio. <laughs> Yes, it was. It was. A couple of people, um, uh, Damon, uh, Jeffrey Wheeler said, Black Westchester is the truth. Um, Matumbo Muhammad said, Black media in any form is important. Continue success to Black Westchester. And then Jeffrey Wheeler said, Black Westchester equals Black elegance. Keep making us proud, my awesome brothers. Joe Murray wanted you to, wanted, uh, said to Damon, I agree about Scarpino. Um, you know, he's an attorney that's dealing with it. Um, and Hector Santiago said, Black Westchester was the first news outlet to cover my work six years ago, way before there was a newspaper and before Zoom. He said, it's been a, it's a blessing to have our local story shared correctly. Much respect to you all. That was from Hector, Hector Santiago, the day, the, the um, stop and shake with the, you know, the police. And um, I just want to thank all of them. And again, I wanted to utilize, I wanted to definitely talk about the article, but I wanted to so we could actually thank you for absolutely for, for what you did. Like what you did was amazing as far as I'm concerned. And um, you didn't have to. And you put, as someone who does this, I know the level of work that you put into it. Like, you know, we've had various conversations. You talked to various people and you did your research on certain things and you got links in there. And it, trust me, if nobody else knows, I know the level of work you put into this. And that makes me appreciate it even more. Uh, and, not that it's just about us, but the level of work you put into it, you know, expressing about us. Well, I pre I appreciate that, but like I said, it's 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 your guys uh, it's your guys' story. And but if hey, if it gets me on people uh, before politics for the first time, uh, well, you've been you invited before. You ain't feel invited, right. man. You've been, but y'all couldn't make it at last notice. <laughs> I was trying to that's get you to Yeah, and that's why I'm on my cell phone now. So sorry for the uh, audio difficulties and stuff, no, but I appreciate right. it. And no again, it's your story. I'm just telling it. That's the way I look at it. So, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. And I appreciate what you do. Um, Damon, anything you want to say? Uh, nah, man. Thank you, man. Even my commissioner, man, um, Louis Molina said it was a great story. Um, so uh, even people at work enjoyed it, you know, because um, even some people at work, you know, didn't know why, you know, Black Westchester was started. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was a good article, man. And, and thank you again. We, we always have great conversations, man, you know, on the record and even offline, you know, so 
you know, we'll definitely continue to do that, man, because there's a lot of things, a lot of work that needs to be done, man. Right. I mean, it's, it's about, I do, it's, it's, it's about informing the people, you know, and, you know, sometimes I could get opinionated, you know, um, you know, um, but I, I try to back my, my opinions with certain facts, you know, you know, when, 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 when I give my opinion, but, but I think it's about basically informing the people, man. The people need need as much information nowadays, you know, and much good information so they can make the proper decisions, you know, especially when it comes to the political process, man. I think that's I think that's I think that's so important, you know. Um, I think that's so important, and because we, we we there's a lot of work to be done, and with this COVID and and people not getting their jobs back, back you know, I mean, information has to be key. It, it has to be key. And you've done one more thing for me, uh, Mark. So I posted the article, the, the picture of the article on my Facebook page. And for the first time ever, I got an alert on my phone that says, you have um, William O'Shaughnessy like your post. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, whoa, Mr. B.O.X. Like my post. I like, I'm trying so hard. I've never yeah, seen you that could, before. <laughs> you got to frame that one, print it yeah, out. You, yeah, I said that I, 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 I cropped it. I said that the day, but I was like, "Yo, we was we like the post." <laughs> so, so you made that happen because that's never happened before. I, I didn't realize that we were friends on Facebook, which is amazing too. We are actually Facebook friends. I, I did, I did not know that, know that, but um, yeah. So you, you, you made that happen. Oh, well, he's wa he's watching now. So that's that's one thing I accomplished there, right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So um. Thank you for all you do, man. And I just thank you for coming through and, and I appreciate you. And yeah, thank you for telling our story. Like, I mean, I, th I think that is actually, I actually think it's going to open up um, uh, some doors that were not open, um, um, even on the advertising side, you know, just it's gonna open up some doors that 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 had not really been open to us. And, and you um, brought us into other people's homes that was not, did not know about us. You, you, you educated a lot of people that did not even know we existed or had heard about us, but heard something other than that about us. And we're not messing with us because of something they heard. You know, like Lorraine just said, somebody called her and said, you know, I got a newfound respect for Mr. Woodson and Mr. Jones after reading that, because they only knew what they heard up to this mm -hmm. point. So I thank you because it definitely did that too. So I thank you for that as well. Like I said, I just, uh, I'm happy to write it. So. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad it's uh, it's going over well. And uh, like I said, when you guys uh, write your uh, autobiography or whatever, I'll, I'll submit a couple chapters. I had a lot of space, but there's more I could throw in there. So, <laughs> Thank you. so absolutely. And I'm gonna we're gonna take you up on that. And let me just say this here: you are welcome anytime. It's open door. Yeah, you got bro. something you want to express? You you let me know. It's an open door anytime. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll take you up. Like I said, since you guys were back on uh, with Reisman and me, I've been uh, uh, I've been waiting for the opportunity. So here I am. I'm glad to, I'm glad that this uh, that this was an excuse to come on. So thanks for having me. Great. No doubt. No doubt. Um, any last words, Damon? Nah, man. It's great. Everybody have a good night. I'm about to take a nap. I gotta go to work. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do a long and then either. Um, um, you could be doing anything else. We decide to ride with us. We greatly appreciate it. This is another COVID edition of Black West Chester presents the People Before Politics radio show. We're on every Sunday, six to eight. Until next week, peace. Peace. Have a good night.